sentence is on social determinants of mental health in Ghana. The following panel members will be assembled for this discussion. Madam Winifred Chum, Madam Marta Kofi, Madam Majua Kusichire, and Mr. Dan Taylor. Do we have them? Let's welcome them. And most definitely, the last defender, the last man standing to moderate this is the man himself, colleague in height, Dr. Anefi Asamwa Ban. Your city is the highest. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, colleagues, and welcome. We're getting to the end, so thank you for your patience. The session we just listened to looked at what are the environmental and commercial determinants of NCDs in Ghana. This particular session is going to be a little narrower. We're going to focus on mental health but even that we're going to look specifically at the social determinants of mental health. What are the causes of mental health? So I think it's, we heard in the morning that it's common knowledge now that mental illnesses are on the increase. We don't have complete data, but everything points to the fact that we are seeing a lot more mental health illnesses and some of us believe we even have an epidemic of mental health in this country and we need to look at it in that perspective so like anything else in Ghana as soon as you talk about mental health our focus is treating the sick and the first thing you hear we don't have enough psychiatrists we don't have enough psychiatry hospitals what we've learned this morning is the way to deal with this epidemic is prevention, 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 and early detection. And you cannot prevent something if you don't know what is causing it. So what this panel is going to help us educate us uh, from their perspective, what do you think are the major social determinants of mental health? Because we don't have time. Each of them will address that question, and then the second round, they will look at what should we do, what can we do. So we'll start with Mental Health Authority. You are the authority, so we'll start with you. Okay, thank you very much, and I want to appreciate NCDA for championing this course. Okay, thank you very much, and I want to appreciate NCDA for championing this course. So I would like to state that it's, it's very important for us to talk about the social determinants of mental health. Because um, mental health, um, we look at our patients in totality. So you have your biological, your psychological, and then the social aspect of what makes up a mental health issue. So somebody can actually have a biological predisposition, but sometimes you may not have them um, show any mental health symptoms unless the psychological or the social issues come up. So it's important for us to know what those social aspects or the social determinants of mental health is, and I'll highlight a few so that my other panelists could also look at that. Um, I would like to mention the aspect of um, unemployment, okay, or some psycho, psycho, um, socioeconomic instability. So unemployment is something that I mean, we are seeing basically, especially in the youth. And for that matter, this is pushing them into the use of substances. So we are having a lot of substance use disorders because mostly people are idle and then they want to just experiment with something. And also when it comes to the socioeconomic instability, we are also looking at poverty. Poverty is one aspect that when you look at basically all the mental health 
almost all the mental health issues. Poverty is something that plays a part, okay? So somebody can have um, a biological predisposition or some psychological predisposition, but they may not show anything. But so far as they are unemployed, they are not bringing in anything, they are not having the finances, they are not satisfied with where they are, it may actually persuade them to have some mental health condition. And then on the flip side of what I talked about in terms of um, unemployment, sometimes even being employed, but in a space that you have a toxic environment or some stresses even at work. So somebody can be employed, gainfully employed, having all the salary, what they are expecting, but you realize that their environment is quite toxic. The working environment is quite harsh. So there are a lot of stresses, you have to meet deadlines, and all these things affect our mental health. Lastly, I want to mention family connectedness. That's also a, another important social determinant that we have to look at. You may have a family that you, you have a mother or a parent who is autocratic or authoritative. And for that matter, children are not able to voice out issues. When they have issues, they internalize it. This alone can predispose them to depression. Previously, we are. Thank you very much. Done it very respectfully. So, unemployment, toxic working environment, poverty, dysfunctional families, which is all our families. So, yes. All right, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dominic, Dominic Unigura, and I work for Basic Needs Ghana. Um, so, she has highlighted most of the major social determinants to mental health. I would like to hit a bit to uh, issues on urbanization. I think uh, the previous panelists did mention something around that. Uh, but urbanization have also contributed one of the social determinants to mental health issues. Um, people are migrating from low income settings or rural communities to the cities. Most people come in here uh, in Accra particularly without any idea of where they are going to stay. And so you find yourself in some environment that does not support healthy lifestyles. Uh, people begin to, s to abuse substances when they move into urban communities. People come into urban communities also and lose touch with social relations like she mentioned. Maybe you left your wife and your children somewhere in a village and you are now here alone. You know, that loss of social connection is one of the things that is contributing to some more healthy lifestyle, just trying to cope with loneliness and all that. Um, another aspect is uh, social inequalities, especially that which causes gender-based violence. Um, women mostly suffer these uh, gender-based inequalities. We have women who uh, have been accused of witchcraft and, and other things among young people um, there are many young people who have suffered one form of mental health condition or the other as a result of failed uh, relationships, uh, I mean, uh, uh, romantic relationships, marriages, domestic violence, and all that. So this is also one other uh, social determinant to, to look at. And then also we have those other environmental factors. You know, we've, we've, I think the, the, the previous panelists mentioned something around environment. You know, what happened in, in, in the Volta region recently, for example, has exposed a lot of people to some sorts of uh, psychological stresses. Um, people are traumatized. Um, in, in our recent visit when it happened, there were others who complained or had suicidal ideations, wanted to take away their lives. People are depressed. You know, all of these contribute to our, some of the social determinants to to mental health. I'll leave it here. And then. Thank you. Getting richer. Good. Please go ahead. Um, so I want to add a few, but I want to look at it um, using the life course, focusing a lot more on our children. A lot has been mentioned, but I'll look at it also at the environmental and neighborhood risk factors. We mentioned that depending on which environments um, you come from, it exposes you to mental health issues as a child. Your, your experiences, your exposures, um, access to 
alcohol and drugs has been mentioned, but I want to focus a lot more on betting, sports betting and gaming, which is becoming a big issue in our country. Yes. And I, I must say that there are lots of secondary school students attempting suicide because they, they've been addicted to betting. So this is one big and major issue affecting our youth. Um, also focusing a little more on children um, regarding the issue of all kinds of trauma and violence and abuse, as well as neglect that they are exposed to. So, um, studies again have shown that in our parts of the world, um, a lot of neglect and lack of stimulation of children predisposes them to mental health issues and um, intellectual disability. Um, these days, there's a lot more focus on um, leaving our children to the screens. They spend more time on the screen without um, physical engagement and um, interaction with these children and these also predispose them to mental health issues. And then I also want to talk about, um, it's been mentioned, poverty and, employ and unemployment. What I want to add to this aspect is that it's a vicious cycle and it's evidence-based as well. Um, you have poverty and unemployment predisposing you to having mental health issues and illness. And then when you do have the mental health issue with these, um, it it's causes a vicious cycle where it leaves you with an inability to work or to be productive. And that does not only affect you as an individual, but affects other family members and that's also predisposed these other family members and children to mental health issue, issues and the vicious cycle continues. And then lastly, I would want to add um, sociocultural and religious factors. Um, as a country, we have our own belief systems, expectations, um, which contribute a lot to societal stigma and discrimination when it comes to mental health issues. And with that, it does affect um, health seeking and early intervention for those with uh, mental health issues. Also, there's a lot of perception of what causes mental health issues. A lot of people believe in its punishments from the gods. We see it a lot in our movies. Um, when you, you do something wrong in a movie, you end up being afflicted with mental illness in line with our belief systems, or it must be as a result of spirituality, which also affects our health-seeking behavior and early intervention. So I would like to pass it on. Yeah, my name is Dan Taylor, and I work with Mind Freedom Ghana. All the issues that um, I wanted to dwell on have been spoken about, especially the issue of uh, screen addiction. That was a major issue that Dr. Dodoy spoke about last week when we were in O. We engage community leaders, religious leaders, assemblymen, and other, uh, the broad spectrum of the society, issues of screen addiction. And of course, um, that is a major issue that really the, um, the, the audience you know, came to terms with these issues in terms of what the kind of effect it can have on people's mental health. So that's an, a major issue of uh, social determinant. And also, just as uh, Doug just spoke about stereotyping. Stereotyping, that is another issue that is a social determinant of mental because at the end of the day, something that might have happened over the past years to a family or, or to some families, these are used as you know, some sort of uh, negative thoughts and negative perceptions about the family. And once it gets to that point where it goes beyond their, um, um, them being able to accommodate it can be a social determinant for mental health. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mata Kofi um, with the Mental Health Society of Ghana, the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations. I want to take it from the perspective of um, emotional abuse. Emotional abuse in the sense where we're living in, in, in the community where we have traditions that 
the fact that you are a woman predisposes you or a female predisposes you to having mental health conditions due to um, burdens that you need to grow up with as a woman, society expecting you to even marry at a point in time. Thereby, when you are not married at a particular stage, they heap a lot of pressure, they say a lot of things about you, thereby this can make you have a mental health challenge. I also want to look at it uh, from the aspect of um, tradition. Tradition most often make women to be reserved, girls to be reserved in a community where you are dealing with uh, personality disorders, and then you have to face a society that labels. So when we talk about social determinants, these are some of the social issues or passive comments that people make about a person can also let you have um, a mental health issue. We are also talking about um, in appropriate or unhealthy food supply chain for a household or a family, which falls under either um, lack of economic empowerment, which also have its basis traced to um, poor education or non-education at all. These are some of the social factors that also can let one have um, mental health challenges or problems. And also adverse experiences in life. So we are talking about the sexual abuses, we are talking about um, 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 losing a loved one or losing hope with a job, losing a job or even coming to a traumatic incident of an accident and you having to lose an aspect of your body. That can also let you have mental health challenge that is unprepared or unaware disability or even a health issue that you least expect can also let you have mental health challenges. Thank you. Thank you. They deserve an applause. <laughs> With a very short while, they've gone through all the major determinants and just to remind you, one, they talked about unemployment and it's just not unemployment but also Toxic working conditions. You may be employed by the toxic working conditions. Poverty and the linkage between poverty and mental health, they highlighted that. But also the issue of urbanization, the absence of social connections, loneliness, the big issue of social equity, gender based violence, the expectations the society has on women and even how people are dealing with disasters. And we're reminded that mental health is no respecter of age. So it's important that when we look at mental health, we look at the whole life course and remember children also have mental illnesses and we need to look at that. And of course, the big issue of the sociocultural factors, our belief and our movies depicting mental health as a punishment. I'm talking about the African movies, part one, part two. <laughs> Stereotyping, screen addiction, but also the emotional abuse and tradition and all, and the experiences people have gone through. So they've gone through a lot of the determinants. Before we ask them to help us look at, so what do we do? I'm wondering whether anybody will want to add one or two areas that you think they've left out. This is the first announcement, yes. yes. Um, so I, I wanted to add, also focusing on our children, there's also the big issue of bullying, which is across board, um, including cyber bullying, physical, emotional. But I want to highlight what we have normalized in our school. So in the school system in Ghana, it's okay for someone to bully someone in the third form, whether JHS or SHS, to bully another person in first year. And it's normalized. There are no policies in place to stop, to stop that and to take action. And you find it's also being a vicious cycle. 
the victim now looks forward to perpetuating the same violence. And it does have serious mental health impacts on children. Um, they end up even growing with the negative impacts of, of that. So that's what I wanted to add. Yeah, all right. So bullying in schools, bullying in church, yes. Yes. Mine is still related to drug abuse, the kind of uh, content that um, young people or children, or especially young people, mix up these days and drink. For instance, based upon an investigation that I've conducted, reveals that um, young people now put uh, Lucozet, energy drink, they are able to put uh, uh, some, you know, those things like the penicillin, there's one that they prepare. They just put it in the drink and just drink it just because they want to feel high. And usually when you miss those contents, it, it, the reaction changes. It can be something like a chemical reaction. And when they take those things, you see, those things go to damage their kidneys and other organs. I think they mix different, different kinds of concussion items, contents with alcohol and alcoholic beverages just for them to feel high. And that is one area that we should target. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Good. So our six panelists has added something. Now let's hear to the yes here our seventh panelist. Thank you very much. Yes. My name is my name is Frederick Kenty. I represent the Red Cross. Um what I would like to talk about is also um improper handling of our pension benefits. Because in most cases, people don't put up things like their buildings while they are active in service. And as soon as they go on pension and they take their pension... Elderly they, abuse. They, they, they use it to build, and then there will be no money left. And in their old age, maybe there will be some NCDs and other things also coming in. They need money for drugs. And you see that most of these, these old people go into depression. They're going to serious depression, and I think it's something that we have to target. It's very, very important that we look at that one. Yeah. And if you are not lucky, you'll get a haircut too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you all. I enjoyed the lunch, so I'll talk positively. <laughs> well, my contribution is about trying to use force to solve some of these social problems. Like this girl I'm saying, you know when there was change of government, there was a swoop on them, but we saw the rebuttal, which resulted unfortunately killing of somebody like Major Mahama and other things. And um, when I, I asked a certain question and Social Dr. determinants of mental health. Yes, it's one of it. All right. Because I was just reminding you. Yes, because the question is, when you go to these girl I'm saying, the question they ask you is that, do you want the goal to be in the ground for us to go hungry? You understand? And it's a difficult question to ask. Like the question you asked me, why do pastors fornicate? When I also asked you, why, did, why do doctors smoke? There are certain things that cannot be eliminated. I'm not trying to be political, but President Kufo said something. He said corruption can never be eliminated. Social vices can never be eliminated. We can minimize it. Because even in the religious sector, Religious extremism causes harm. So we need to come to a point. It's like trying to preach to a prostitute or a drug addict. It's very difficult to convert them. Yes, I'm saying this for a fact. Because I met, oh, sorry, uh, forgive me the use the word prostitute. So the ladies don't rise against me. Sex workers. That's why they say we should call them. I have met somebody who told me she was in prostitution, and I tried to convince her that I'll look for six friends and will raise business capital for her. I'm trying to convince you to be brief. Yes, it's definitely brief. very difficult. Yeah. So, sir, <laughs> um, these things are hydra-headed. And if we want to be extremists, they say, oh, we are this, we are that. The CSOs themselves also have their challenges. So what we need to do is that we need to gravitate towards a certain dimension whereby we don't try to revolutionize change, but we should try to do them in a gradual process. For instance, somebody, a panelist in, one of, in, the, in the previous panel said, 
um, what do you call it? He is against alcoholism. But somebody took an argument from the Bible that he said, do not be drunk in wine in excess. He didn't say don't, don't drink. And right. so it's like, um, we don't have to... I can see you are landing. Can you land? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, our approach should be a bit friendly because if you are speaking the truth in a bitter way, in a way that is not palatable, palatable it may also not be appreciated. So let us learn how to package our message. Because how come that we have NGOs years over years? Because people can change. I stand to be corrected. Was it not the very person who created Atomic Bomb who ended up creating the Nobel Peace Prize? All right. So, so things can change, but let us do it gradually in a brotherly... Very, very good point. Very good point. Very loving one. Very Thank good you. point. <laughs> so his short message was, yes... Let's do it gradually. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think I've summarized it for you. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. My <laughs> name is Yvonne Ejepon. Um, it has been a fruitful day and then a good deliberation till now. But my suggestion is we've all gathered here, beautiful hotel, and we are doing all this discussion. It's very good. We should try and move to the marketplaces. I think. Then we'll do all this in our local dialect. Because as we sit here, we are discussing among ourselves for a policy to be, I mean, put up for all these things. But those out there also, they need more of what we are discussing about. So that at least if their mother or someone should hear this, their message will be carried across. So we should try and move out to the marketplaces and then to the schools for our children. You are to right. put all these things across. Thank you. If we here has a consensus, then it's easy to move. So that's why we are starting small, so that we can build consensus. But your message is, we are speaking to ourselves. We are speaking to people who are already converted. We should go out there and... Thank you very much. My name is Aisha Tizibiru. Uh, one of the panelists made mention of uh, a woman is, in our society, a woman is supposed to marry at a point in time. And even when she gets married and she couldn't bear children or have a child. People forget that there are two people involved in the marriage, and they tend to mount pressure on the woman for not being able to conceive. And that could also lead the woman into mental breakdown. Thank you. All right. Good. So now we want to look at one, one last comment. Then we'll look at what can we do our colleague has already started by saying, whatever we do, we should do it gradually, but... Okay, to be brief. <laughs> My name is Brown, from um, GBU, Ghana Blend Union. Uh, I think one of our panelists said something about the food that we eat, we eat and concerning the kind of fertilizers the, the farmers provide. They, they forgot one. If you go to the supermarket and the malls, most of the food that they sell, they sell over there is GMO. GMO foods. So I think we all know the implications of GMO food. So if they can do something about it, then it's okay. Because it's, it's part. All right. Thank you, sir. I can see you are not a supporter of GMO food, so... But, yes, our lady here wants to. Then I will invite my panelists to, I mean the proper panelists, okay. to... I'm, I'm to Dora Kezia Sean from yes. Mental Health uh, Society of Ghana. Uh, I want to talk of uh, children who have been buying drinks. And it is every day, maybe two or three bottles, they will take it. But nobody is controlling this. Even they've been taking uh, energy drinks. You will see a uh, rash, a uh, stone. The children are just taking it as a drink. And the content of sugar in that energy drink. And uh, I have a problem with uh, food and drug board. Because all the energy drinks they are coming different, 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 with different, different names. But they know it's destroying kidneys. That's why the children are now having problems with their kidneys. 
So they should help their country and help the gener generation that are about to come. So that they will not kill all of us. Bye-bye. Right. So <laughs> FDA, the sugar, when we were kids, we were also eating sugar, but it was black and white. Uh, and Alewa and Wapi, now is, they are taking sugar almost every hour. Now we are looking at giving this social determinants, what can we do as a society? So our panelists will start and then if there is time, we'll invite you to. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, so um, as a way forward, I would say that uh, we need to have an increased education, awareness, sensitization on mental health. Generally, someone mentioned here that when you mention mental health, people try to avoid it as much as possible. And that is because of the very low education about what mental health is. What we see is that mostly people get to a very, very advanced stage and now start seeking help. And so there need to be that increase in awareness from the educational curricula that we are having uh, in terms of uh, increased mental health literacy amongst our students from primary school through to JHS. That would beat down the stigma, because stigma is one of the reasons why people generally do not want to seek for services. So I would say that as a country, we need to do better in terms of raising awareness about mental health, because the people we see out there, uh, generally people with severe mental health in conditions who are homeless, just forms some 1% yes. of the total people with mental health conditions in Ghana. A lot of us are carrying it, but we do not even know that we have. So there need to be that conscious effort by all stakeholders to increase awareness on education, I mean, on, on mental health, and then we'll be able to deal with the stigma. Um, and then also, we have always said this, government resourcing of mental health in Ghana. It's been woefully very low, you know, and all service providers are struggling with this. Um, in recent times, most health workers are leaving the country for greener pastures elsewhere. And what is the reason? Most of them do not have what, some of the basic logistics to work with. Apart from the incentives that are very low, there are also no logistics to work with. So you have clients who come, there are no medications. Every day you are telling them to go and buy. We've spoken of poverty. They can't buy the medicine. So you are stressed for the patient, you are stressed for yourself because you're not even getting the incentives. So they end up leaving the country. So we would need to see how government can increase resourcing of mental health to promote community-based mental health care. That, in, in its own way, would also improve the situation we are dealing with. Thank you. Good. So mental health is neglected not just by government, but our society as a whole. So we need to increase awareness. Muna <laughs> Moble. Okay, so I also want to um, reiterate the aspect of education. And I want to touch on um, that aspect from destigmatization, as that is one of the things that impairs people from assessing mental health care. It's important for us to note that I think over here, if you have any physical challenge and you're in your workspace, it's easier for you to tell anybody that, okay, or go to an employer and say that today I have a headache, and for that matter, I'll not be able to come to work. But if you have depression or any other mental health challenge, I'm sure most people will not want their employers to know, and that is just because of stigma. Okay, so just like the way we have come to normalize physical illness, okay, in the same way, if we are educating, we are sensitizing people on mental health issues, we are making it a common place. We are talking about it everywhere, in our churches, in our homes, in our offices. It will be easier for people who have mental health issues to seek help. So that's one aspect that we, we can look at in terms of normalizing what mental health issues. And just like my um, colleague said, it's not just when we say mental health, it's not just, I, I'm sure the picture that comes into most people's mind is somebody who has stripped naked and then walking along our roads. But if you have a mental health situation, there are times that it, it means that mental health in some aspects, looking at WHO's definition, you can't contribute to your society, okay? You, can't, you, you, you actually have some stresses 
that you are dealing with. And I'm sure everybody here has one challenge or another. So if we are supposed to look at mental health in, in that regard, that just like anybody can have a physical illness, that would be easy for me to talk about it. And we are doing mental health issues the same. People will always seek help when they have issues and will not sit down till it becomes something else. I just want to also highlight the fact that our physical health goes a long way to affect our mental health. And in the long run, our mental health also affects our physical health. So just like somebody will say, okay, for me, what I have is maybe hypertension or maybe another chronic condition. Bear in mind that having a chronic illness in the long run can actually lead you into some mental health issues because you'll be spending money, I mean, on your medications, on transportation to the hospital to and fro. So let's try as much as possible to make this just um, a common thing, just like we have done to fiscal illness. And I'm happy that this thing is going on and getting all stakeholders involved so that when people have issues, they can talk about it. Thank you. So we should normalize mental health. It's okay to say I'm depressed. We should normalize mental health. And we are all have some mental health challenges. Moyale. <laughs> So I, I want to say that we, we need a, a shift and a focus more on primary health care. So for a lot of Ghanaians, I find that there is so much focus on the um, tertiary health facilities um, and receiving specialized care, which is not enough. So a lot of people talk about only going to Pantang Hospital um, Accra Psychiatric Hospital or Ankafo Hospital. But we've learned that the preventive model is the way to go. We, we can make um, better impacts, reach the community-based services in our health structure. It includes going to the school to provide health education to students on some of these issues and teachers on some of these issues we have talked about. It includes having community debates and sensitization of community members and opinion leaders and religious leaders. It includes going to churches, mosques, and other um, religious organizations. It includes going to corporate organizations, the marketplaces, as has been mentioned. Unfortunately, there isn't much support. And also to add to what has been mentioned, that's enabling environment, even for those on the ground, to be able to provide these services effectively. So I think going forward, if there's a lot more support, apart from what the Ghana Health Service provides, I know a lot of CSOs are involved in community activities and services. If there's a lot more support, we'll be able to catch a lot more of the population and deal with the preventive aspects, which will make a greater impact. Thank so, you very much. So more community support, community-based, and not investing in big psychiatric hospitals. All right. You didn't say that. I'm just adding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And of course, that's the way to go in terms of community care. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it has to do with education, education, education. Our organizations, mandate has to do with four areas, advocacy, awareness creation, prevention, and research. Uh, we have done a lot of awareness creation. Last week, the whole of last week, we were in the voter region. We went to the community, that's called uh, Akwepe, Akwepe uh, Gaja. I mean, we went right into the community with the um, mental health staff and then the social welfare um, officers to talk about mental health. At the end of the day, the, the, the kind of questions that came from the community members and even the school children tells you about the level of ignorance in terms of mental health issues. So once the education is sustained and all of that, it will go a long way to actually make people to appreciate when these broad mental health concerns and issues are, they will then know what to do. Like my broad mental health concerns and issues are, they will then know what to do. Like my colleague partner said, it's not those people that you see on the streets, you know, eating in, uh, in the drains in public, I mean, uh, and all of that. No. People, People have basic, I mean, minor mental problems in their communities that people are not able to, to actually identify. And to go back to what the keynote speaker said this morning, 
issues of absenteeism, absenteeism are quite rampant. I mean, there are people who go to work in the morning and they'll be sitting uh, doing one thing and they'll never fail for employers to be able to have, assess this kind of employee assistance program where um, when there are problems, or I mean, you, you, you engage MHA to come to do education and awareness creation to workers so that they are able to identify some of these problems that, uh, you know, precipitate mental health conditions. So I'll go back to say education, education awareness creation is the, is the way to go so that they'll be able to actually minimize mental health conditions from, you know, getting to that where stages. Thank you. Thank you, education, education. I also learned that if you start something and you never finish, you have a mental illness. <laughs> so if you start a meeting and you never finish. You <laughs> so we're going to have our last comment. So yes, on education, but I also want to say that you can't uh, preach a virtue and then continue to practice vice. And I'm saying this in respect of toxic working conditions. Therefore, I will implore and advise that institutions and, and corporate bodies have a flexible mental health um, 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 roadmap that makes the working environment very safe. We are talking about flexible times of work and then we are also talking about um, um, monthly checks and review for mental health um, um, well-being for, for workers. And then I also want to stress on the fact that whilst we are talking about education, 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 one thing has stuck with me. And I always say that uh, we need our government or our state to make deliberate and conscious efforts in financing mental health. And then we can look at the avenues of social marketing. And what do I mean by social marketing? We have brands like myself, persons with lived experience in mental health, that can go on with um, other corporate social bodies who will advertise their products for them. We have, um, if I should search a few, we have um, Awake, that is um, gathering money from the sales of their product to um, the uh, National um, Cardiothoracic Center. We have um, 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 YAS doing the same. We can also have champions of mental health within our communities and, and, and within our organizations to raise social marketing for funding. In fact, and I stand to be corrected, we have the mental health levy and the mental health fund. And I sit here and I want to know how much do government put into this mental health fund, what even is the allocation or the premium or the percentage of the levy that we are going to use to be doing some of this awareness creation because you cannot make laws and have constitutions and do not make budgetary allocations. How can you raise awareness? You have to gather people. It takes resources. So if we really want to achieve anything and we want to have um, an, a holistic mental health overview as a country and as people, then these are some of the deliberate efforts that the state and all stakeholders should have to put in place so that we'll be able to achieve this. And let not forget to add mental health component to our educational curriculum because there is a saying and added that goes that if you want to catch, you catch them young. If we are able to start bit by bit, most mental health situations start from childhood and then when you are not fortunate enough and then you meet with a trigger,